Hi, welcome to my studio vlog for January 2023. So in this vlog I'm just going to focus on three things that I've been up to this month. Firstly on metal embossing and then I'll also show you some Bargello projects that I've been doing and then also some of my Celtic knotwork that I've been doing as well. So the metal embossing has been taking over <laughs> the last couple of months, I must say. I've really enjoyed incorporating my Celtic knotwork with the metal embossing. This piece is a key holder, or it could also be a lead holder for your dog leads, something like that. And I'm going to be doing a workshop on this uh, coming up probably in April uh, for the key holder. So you can learn to do that with me. And then I'll pop some photos in here because I don't actually have any videos. But this here is a keepsake box that I made for my mum. And you can see that the top of it has got a copper metal embossed top uh, in one of my ivy vine designs. And then I've also been making some house numbers. And uh, this is on the front of our house. Again, using one of my ivy Celtic knot designs. And I'll just show you a little tip that I found out about using the copper I've been working on some metal embossing projects recently and these are going to be for a new workshop that I'm bringing out in the new year and they're going to be metal embossed house number plates. So I did this one a couple of weeks ago and I haven't actually sprayed it to seal it off yet and as you can see it's tarnished somewhat. This one I just made yesterday and you can see the brightness of that one. So these are made out of copper and then aged with a little bit of a process. So what I'm going to do, and I've just tried it out to see if it works and it does, is just to take some of the tarnish off this but leave the 27 actually tarnished so that when I actually do spray it over with some UV protection spray it'll um, be a bit lighter on the outside and then a bit darker for the 27. So I'll just move this one out of the way. I have punched holes in it and then I decided to put gaffer tape on the back so uh, I'll need to repunch those but that's a different matter entirely. So I was having a look online as you do just to see if I could find out any uh, cheap ways of taking the tarnish off copper and this one seems to work. Um, salt and vinegar that's all it is so the original was some white rock salt and some white vinegar I don't have either of those I've got Himalayan salt pink salt and I had some malt vinegar so I put those in together just mix them in you can see that the salt hasn't quite dissolved because I didn't put a lot of vinegar in but taking a little cotton bud I'm going to go up to the corner and then just start working. You can see, I don't know if you can see there, but this process is actually taking the tarnish off. And you might be able to see a little tiny bit of a difference. It's a bit hard with the lights, but it is a lot closer to the one that I just made yesterday. So that's looking really good. So I'm going to continue with that process. As I say, I'll just be taking off. I'm not sure actually whether to try and leave the knot work darker as well. I'll have a think about that as I go around. But I'll definitely be keeping the numbers darker. And what I'm quite pleased with, because I did wonder what would happen, is that the aging technique that I've used uh, is not actually coming off so it's actually staying behind even though there's a mixture of salt and vinegar on there so I'm really pleased about that that means that aging process that I've used is really working so I'm going to continue with that and then I will spray it with a UV protection spray so that when it does go outside it should hopefully keep the lighter metal that I've taken this tarnish off 
and then the darker metal that I'm going to leave the tarnish behind on. So that's a good project that I'm really pleased with. So I hope that little tip was useful. Metal embossing is definitely something that I'm going to be doing a lot more of this year. I've also got a workshop on the house number as well so if you want to learn how to make your own house number then you can come along and do that with me. That's at the end of March and I'll put all the details to these things in the description box below. So let's move on to Barge Yellow. So if you haven't come across Barge Yellow before it's a really lovely form of stitching. Quite simple, just straight stitches all the way across on a canvas and this beautiful tote bag kit is one that I bought from Bargello A Go Go and I'll put the link to them in the description box as well below. I've had fantastic service from Natalie there at Bargello A Go Go so I can definitely recommend them. So I've been working on this tote bag for most of the evenings in January actually so at the moment I've got two of the side panels finished and the base panel for this tote bag and I'm just about starting the main side panel here. So you can see that that will be that side panel there. Also included in the kit are all the um, handles and also the feet as well so it's a really fantastic kit and there's even a little tote bag as well to keep all of your bits and pieces in which is what I've been doing um, needles as well so yeah really pleased with this kit so I'll keep you informed as to how I'm getting on with that and then I wanted to show you a finished Bargello project that I've done so this Bargello project is the Waves kit by the Bargello sisters and it's a 40 centimetre by 40 centimetre piece and when you've finished it you can either make it into a seat cover as I've done here or you could make it into a cushion cover or even have it as a wall hanging so I'll just try and get in so you can see all the detail there and all the lovely colours really pleased with that kit so this chair is actually a chair that my dad made in the 1960s and uh, I wanted to recover the seat because it had got a bit old and tatty I didn't really want to paint the chair or anything I just wanted to brighten it up somehow and so this Bargello seat cover has really done the job and I'm really pleased with how that's come out so that's another finished project that I finished at the beginning of the month and then for a future Bargello project I've got this waiting in line which is again by the Bargello sisters which is the same um, ladies who made the kit for that I used on my dad's chair um, and this is called ice cream and I'm looking forward to doing this one but that will be after I've finished the tote bag and all of these again all of these kits I actually bought from Bargello A Go Go so I would definitely go and have a look at their website if you're interested in having a go. Plus I do some uh, beginners workshops on Bargello so you could come along and have a little go with me if you wanted to. And the final project that I wanted to tell you about this month was actually uh, started in last October. So I taught Celtic Not Work to two groups of Angela Reed's creative calligraphy, her two groups that she runs regularly every week. Um, and they have actually put together a wonderful exhibition which is on at the Customs House in South Shields at the moment which is called Inspired by Lindisfarne. So they're using their calligraphy, they're using the Celtic knotwork that they learned from me and they're also um, showing book binding that they did with a vet jar and so it's a really great exhibition so I would go along and have a look. I've got three pieces in that exhibition as well so definitely um, go along and have a look at it because the one artwork that they've all created is absolutely amazing and as part of being inspired by Lindisfarne, the Lindisfarne Gospels I was working on my own little uh, project so this is eight different postcards all based on the same knots that you can find throughout the Lindisfarne Gospels or a version of it anyway and these postcards are going to be going in the post to various friends over the next couple of months. 
So that's what I've been up to this month. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look at what I've been doing in the studio this month. And uh, here's to a creative February for us all. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.